Hello. Hello, Santos. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Stefan? Awesome. How are you, Santos? Yeah, great. Thanks. Welcome back. <laughs> After <laughs> some time you. off. Are you yeah, it? yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed very much, brother. Thanks. Yeah, very uh, needed uh, break that I've had. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, summer is here, and uh, we're in the middle of cancer, and everybody had a little bit to bite with the last time, but we'll get to that just a little later. I'm sure there's millions of things you're ready to share. What were some of the uh, grave thoughts that you received in the in the in the last few weeks? Yeah, yeah. There's always plenty to share, brother. Always. Um, I'm always torn between the two worlds that I walk through, and that is service to others and mankind, and sharing and giving, and time that I need for myself to find these treasures, to meditate, go within, and improve myself in my uh, alchemical. Um, um, journey of the soul, you know, and um, and my role in salvation and redemption and atonement, at one moment, and um, so there's always the philosopher um, when you when you become a truther, a pather, and you get on the path, you will always be torn between the two. You know, I love being a hermit. I wish I could just. Um, disappear from all other, um, you know, entities, persons, human beings in particular and isolate myself and um, and remain with myself, you know, because when you find that your own company is the best company, then you are on the way to returning because the intelligence now is being separated from matter and the t intelligence is longing to be in its own true home. And it longs to be where it belongs in the spirit realms. Whenever bodies uh, occur around souls, um, this is what happens. We, we, uh, the intelligence gets enmeshed in matter, entangled, and does not know how to extricate itself and return home like the prodigal son did. So anyway, that's a bit of um, waffling on now. I, I just wanted to say that um, I enjoyed the three months or so that I had as a break, very much. And I've got many, many, many treasures for you. Every day, the downloads increase. They don't decrease at all in my life. They never have since I woke mm. up in 2007, really. Um, it's been a lifelong awakening, really, I would say. I've never been... Um, heavily tuned with the tuning of this world, you know. I've never had houses, cars, things, and I've never wanted them, and I've never been the ordinary sort of dude, really. Um, I've always, uh, even with my 30 years of being a Jehovah's Witness, I was always just pursuing, you know, the simple things, the philosopher things, wisdom, theological truth, etc. So what I have to share, brother, is... Um, 22 fully developed presentations, PowerPoint presentations, that I have been working on daily and improving. They are basically the presentations I did on tour in 2013. And I released um, those presentations to uh, audiences in Europe and Ecuador in 2013 but not many of them have been uploaded to the internet and um, I realized that even if they are de uploaded to the internet these PowerPoint presentations I did that um, the quality wouldn't be as good as what I'm going to do so yeah. this is what I'm going to be um, sharing with the world next I have 22 PowerPoint presentations the first one I will release will be called Atomic Language 250 um, PowerPoint slides full of um, um, research that has been um, checked and rechecked and uh, all of my work is um, 
impeccable for for resources and um, and research reference. So, atomic language will prove once and for all, for all the um, the truthers out there, uh, that we have a one language, a universal language, and it's atomic. All is atom, as the Egyptians said, and my presentation will support that most famous of all famous ex famous theological and philosophical expressions of all time, and that is all is atom. And in India they said all is om, om, atom. We're going to discover what atom is in all its derivations. So in Hebrew, atom becomes Adam. In uh, later dynastic Egyptian period, it became Aton. And then, of course, the Jews spoke of the tetragram Aton. Well, Aton is uh, basically the atomic nature of the universe. And so, for all the truthers, the um, presentation will suffice they will all they will be comprehensively uh, convinced and they will know for all time that we have one language one cohesive system syncretic system of language it's atomic it's not hebrew it's not sanskrit and yes and yet it is hebrew and it is greek and sanskrit and um latin and all of these mm. languages and yet and yet it stands apart from these languages it is the glue that glues all these holy languages um, now for the academic type of intellectual mind out there that needs further proof well I will give 21 more um, presentations and these are the titles of the presentations that will be released after I release atomic language this month cancer cancer is the sign where my north node is and Leo following is my ascendant so it's very important for me to get this presentation out in the sign of cancer and in the sign of Leo this mm. is where my my mountain is my Mount Meru so these are the presentations that will support atomic language Number one, the holy days, all the key holidays of sig significance along the ecliptic. Number two, the Lamb of God. The universe is a lamp slash lamb. Number three, the sun, S-O-N, slash sun, S-U-N, in history. Number four, ascension and the chrism. Number five, Astrology, the Word of God. Number six, the Holy Science. Number seven, Electricity, slash or hyphen, God. That is, of course, the Demiurgos, God, not Prime Creator, Cause, Source, Being. Number eight, the Age of Aquarius. Number nine, Glastonbury Zodiac and Syncretism. Number 10, nursery rhymes, fairy tales, and syncretism. Number 11, the kingdom of heaven. Number 12, the king and the priest. And in hyphens, sovereignty and spirituality. Number 13, the seven congregations that are in Asia. Number 14, Shiva and Jehovah. I might rename that Jiva and Jehovah, actually, because Jiva is the root cause of the infinite of infinites that is being and cause and source, Jiva. That's actually the true tetragrammaton, Jiva. Jehovah is the, a copy of Jiva, and it's the Demiurgos. Jehovah is not the true God. It is the Demiurgos, the God of truth and falsity, a falsehood, rather, and um, so you know, good and evil, whereas Jiva is the source of Jehovah. Uh, number 15, the Last Supper. We study the works of Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. Much truth to be explored. Number 16, astrological body types. I will show how you can read the facial types of individuals to ascertain their sun sign and their ascendant sign. It's number 17, the science slash art of gospel writing. I did this presentation in Birmingham 
in 2013, which has not been released for some reason. They did upload it and then pulled it down immediately. It only remained on YouTube for a couple of weeks. But um, that one and the Glastonbury Zodiac are already online. And also the sun slash sun in history is already online. It's called um, Stonehenge Presentation in England. I did that at the uh, Stonehenge Truth Juice gathering, gathering. And so only those two presentations, Glastonbury and Stonehenge, are up online as PowerPoint presentations and also uh, should be coming out the, um, the Birmingham one I just mentioned, the science or art of gospel writing. Number 18, life and the golden section. Number 19, the astrological chart of Sri Rama. Number 20, the syncretism of duality in unity. And finally, 21 of the tarot deck major arcana, or the um, rather the uh, trump cards. There are 21 trump cards. And um, the, it's called the 12 tribes of Israel. So um, that's it. That's wow. the uh, supporting evidence. Wow, that's Locked exciting. Mm -hmm. Can't yes. wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, um, also, sorry, just before you go on, the Lamb of God is also online. I did that with. Um, that's online, um, but that was recorded via an interview. So the quality of those four that are already online will not be as good as this. This this will be recorded in full screen, mm -hmm. so you can watch the PowerPoint slides, and I will do a narrative or a voiceover and um, give brief uh, supporting uh, you know, narration. Um, but um, hopefully, if the universe provides the kind of help that I need, I need teams of individuals um, at my, you know, at my um, um, access here to be able to access and, and work with um, these presentations and make them into uh, documentaries video documentaries because without this syncretism we will always be left divided and separate and separate the religion and the theology of separateness and division is just divide and conquer it has no place in abiding truth there is only oneness there's unity of theology syncretism uh, supports or or rather allows Islam Christianity um, astrology alchemy and all the sciences to actually bring support to the unity of all things. So rather than taking the, um, the, um, the stance that, you know, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, then the Mormons are false, and if you're a Baptist, then the Islamists are false, rather than doing this kind of harm to each other and to the sacred documents that exist, Syncretism is the only force or power in the universe that will unite all of humanity once and for all because it is not negatively or positively charged. It is not prejudiced. It is a neutral science. It is neutral. And it, um, into it pour the sciences of Islam and the Quran, the Hindu, the Hare Krishna, the Buddhist, and all are welcome and all are united and syncretized by syncretism. Gorgeous, beautiful, yeah. Yes, yes. Can't wait to see that. Just we recently just uh, experienced all of us the new moon, you know, and that new moon brought some very interesting and some maybe not very nice energies. But all of those energies combined into that revelations for all of us. So, what can you share maybe about this new moon which we just recently experienced, and what can you share about that from astrological point of view? All right, well, look, this is um, a good subject because we need to know um, what a new moon in Cancer means. Cancer is uh, the economy. There are four cardinal signs along the ecliptic, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, and they are the most significant of all the signs. According to the ancient astrologers, he said, pay attention. Marcus Manilius, astrologer to Caesar Augustus in particular, one of the first astrologers to deal with the house system 
of astrology in history. He said, pay attention to the cardinal signs. Cardinal means door, door openers. They open the seasons. Aries, the Lamb of God, opens spring. Cancer, the crab, the scarab, the scarabus of Christ, um, opens the summer. Libra, the uh, scales of balance, um, the preferred Jewish month. That's where Tishri is and um, the month of Tishri on the ecliptic and uh, Judgment Day, Atonement, 23rd of, 23rd of September, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, and all of these sacred, beautiful traditions. Um, and so Libra deals also with religion. Aries and Libra on the equinoxes deal with the ecclesiastical axis of the nature of man, the vertical axis, the head pointing upward to the heavens. And so here is balance and spirituality. Whereas um, Capricorn, uh, the last of these cardinal signs, is earthy, dealing with the political and kingly axis of man, hence the king and the priest. So Capricorn being political and Cancer being economical, because Cancer happens in June. June is Juno. Juno is the temple in Rome where all coins are stamped and pressed. And Jupiter exalts in Cancer, and Jupiter is the consort of Juno. June, the month of June, Cancer, the crab, the economy, money, silver, the moon rules Cancer. So a new moon in Cancer has to do with the silvery element of, well, moony, money. Money is the opposite of one E. One is hiding in money. Mm -hmm. So, but money is the negative. The power, the negative power of the letter M is to deprive the the um, the word that follows of its meaning. So, this is why the Bible says that money is the root of all injury. It's not talking about literal physical money that you put in your pockets. It's talking about um, division, the opposite of one, money. Yeah. And so. And so these ones that uh, believe in selfhood and um, individuality as opposed to universality and the relinquishment of selfhood are the lovers of money. So what is happening now, we have Mars in Cancer, um, 180 degrees opposed to Pluto in Capricorn, squaring with um, Uranus in Aries. This is called a T-square. If there were a planet in Libra, they would be forming a cross, a grand cross called a cardinal grand cross. There are three types of grand crosses. So when planets are aspecting in the cardinal signs, you have a cardinal grand cross. When they are aspecting in the fixed signs of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio and Aquarius, you have a fixed grand cross. Its nature is different to a cardinal grand cross. And when you have planets aspecting in um, a grand cross configuration in the mutable signs, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces, then you have a mutable grand cross. This kind of cross brings change, mutability, changeability. Whereas the cardinal grand cross brings Shiva's cross of destruction. It's a creative cross of extreme creation and, and destruction, depending on uh, the element. The fire and air elements of Libra and, uh, uh, sorry, of um, uh, Aries and Libra, um, they bring about creation and the feminine watery cancer and um, earthy Capricorn, they bring about the destruction. So Mars, who falls in uh, cancer, does not like the sign of cancer, neither does ca the Saturn, because they are happily housed or domiciled in the opposite sign, uh, Capricorn. The two malefics, they love Capricorn. Capricorn is the domicile of Saturn, hence he receives five points of essential dignity there. Mars exalts in Capricorn and receives four points of essential dignity there.
In the Hindu Jyotish Vedic Eastern system, the exaltations are more important than the domiciles. So the exaltation gets five points. So Mars in the old Babylonian and um, Hindu uh, system uh, is more powerful in, in Capricorn than Saturn. And so, and so you must understand this to understand that the element of iron, Mars, is very, very um, uh, diminished in Cancer. And what this means is that not only does Mars uh, bring about destruction in Cancer, but it's in a negative, a very negative um, polarity, not positive. If Mars were, uh, were say, in, Can in Capricorn right now, conjunct Pluto, um, it would be bringing a creative energy to politics and um, probably its opposite, Cancer, economy. So what you see, um, BRICS, the BRICS um, bank, which is the nemesis of the Federal Reserve System, was commenced operating, I think, on the 7th of July, which is basically cancer and um, Mars. Mars is the action, the negative action of the BRICS alliance. It is a change in the world economy. Never before in history has something so significant occurred. Well, of course, you see, these guys, they consult their astrologers and they know that in order for their uh, bank to succeed, it must happen in Cancer. It must be announced in Cancer, whereas the Federal Reserve of um, 1913 was announced on the 23rd of um, December, which is in Capricorn. And so it was climbing, climbing, climbing for 100 years. It had, was charted for 100 years, and its charter ended in 2013 or 2014. And so um, now the new bank, the BRICS, which probably on the earthly plane will be another scam, but on the spiritual um, plane is going to bring about the destruction of the Federal Reserve and the petrodollar, and um, it will um, be it will have the quality of Shiva, Mars in Cancer, which is destruction, complete destruction. It will continue to destroy all ancient um, thought forms and demons and egregores. You see, the reason we are controlled is because the elite Vatican families that control the world have created demons. Um, and we'll get to that toward the end of the um, uh, interview, I guess, show. Um, we'll we'll um, explain the archetypes or the entities that were created thousands of years ago in Babylon and Medo-Persia and Egypt, which were absorbed by Rome, which are demons. And they are the false prophet, the harlot, the beast with seven heads and ten horns that comes out of the sea, the beast of seven horns and uh, ten heads and, uh, sorry, uh, uh, seven heads and ten horns that comes out of the land. Mm -hmm. And the other beast is the uh, false prophet. So... These creatures, they are actually demons, you know, Beelzebub and all of this, but they're not demons from the heavens. They are demons from the powerful money families who probably have a device called um, the Ark of the Covenant or some kind of uh, Merkaba device that they are using to create thought forms and emotion forms called egregores, which are demons. One of these demons is, um, is um, just to give you an idea, um, the false idol. Well, the false, the false image or the false idol is the false ID, the legal name um, that we carry around and we masquerade and, and commit uh, false personage through. This is um, the, the, uh, the, names, the name that is in the Book of Death. The Book of Death is the legal name and the registry. So all registrations, regis, king, means that you are your name is dead. It's a dead name. It's a corporate name. It's corpse. Corpse is dead. And so um, 
the cardinal signs in astrology are dealing mostly with this, the um, spiritual Aries and Libra sign, the mystical Lamb of God and the intellectual um, scales of justice. These are ecclesiastical. This is the, the priest in you that you must release in your trans migratory journey through the underworld, through the cycle of necessity. And so you are releasing the priest in you. But Capricorn and Cancer is the sovereign axis. So you are releasing the king, the sovereign, in you. And this is where Plato was discussing the uh, philosopher kings that must return this is where the book of Joel says, The Spirit of God shall be poured out unto my children, and they shall see visions and dream dreams and prophesy. You see, if we don't, do not release the gift of prophecy within us, well, then we're not speaking the word of God. We are speaking falsehoods. Mm. And we are repeaters like parrots, repeating opinions that we get from institutions that are satanized and demonized like universities uh, one verse city and mm. that one verse city points to Rome all roads lead to Rome and so Rome keeps people in the lowest level of consciousness that is possibly possible for humans opinion and the top level is illumination and the five levels in between are sense knowledge wisdom, intuition, theurgy, and then illumination, the crown chakra. So as you go through the, the chakras, you see the red chakra down below, the red light of fear frequency is the moon. She is red because she is the menstruator. She is the moonstruator. She is red, blood, bleeding, fear. And she causes fear. You see, she is the first heaven and this is why souls that require ascension um, that do not have the right energy to pass through the moon Circe, the church Churche, Kirke mm -hmm. they are bounced back and hence are called monsters moon stars demons deities of the moon so monsters that are born on the earth are these red demons that um, are controlled by the red passion in the blood and they cannot control their opinions. So this is the moon, the opinionated ones. Then what happens is these worldlings become baptized. They get introduced to the literal letter of the word churches, you know, the exoteric church. And they teach you the second level which is sense the senses and we, be, we, we gain more common sense here. This is the water baptism. Hence all the churches, they baptize you in water, M-I-S-T, mist. Whereas the high baptism is M-Y-S-T, mm. fire, mist, the mystery schools, the mystical ones. And so that's the illumination in uh, the High Ram, Aries, the Lamb of God, Hararama, Hiram Abif, hmm. Aries, the Cerebrum, the Lamb of God, at the top of the head. Right, Go. right. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to add, you know, uh, this month we have two full moons in, uh, you know, in the beginning of July and the end of July. The second one being the blue moon and... Uh, that that just adds to all the intensity, and it really seems to be a, a time of, of uh, big announcements. You know, um, we had just announced uh, this uh, Pluto picture, um, and along with that, a whole bunch of other things um, that are really interesting. If we look at that uh, all together, uh, you know, uh, CERN announced that the pentaquark there. Uh, and all goes in this uh, pentagram, Pluto, uh, door to the underworld, transhumanism kind of uh, direction. Um, yeah, what can you add about that? Oh, yeah, well, see, all of, all of this stuff, um, I'm building up to this because 
Um, I'm going to continue um, addressing this um, this configuration in particular now with Mars on the scene in Cancer. Now Mars is transiting or aspecting these two Uranus and Pluto, Uranus in Aries, which is transformer. He's the, not the transformer, he's the revolutionary. Uranus is the higher consciousness, invisible planet, higher consciousness. He's the representative of our heavenly nature here on Earth mm. because Uranus means heavens, you see. And so Uranus in Aries is actually stimulating the spiritual activities, the mystical activities of man. Our nature is described in these four signs. Aries, the first of all the signs, is the spiritual and mystical nature of man. Cancer, the second cardinal sign, is the emotional, watery nature of man. Here the moon is domiciled. She is the emotions. Libra is the intellectual nature. That's where uh, Venus is. Venus and Saturn is exalted there. And Capricorn is Earth, of course, cardinal Earth. Hence the body, the bones, the sinews, the, the, the tissue, muscles, and, and all that is solid and earthy and political, you see. So, so um, cancer, the moon, the silver, and the money, and Juno and all of that stuff, and Jupiter, um, that, that is now being a big part of the, the triad, which is Libra has to do with... Um, um, opposite Aries, the Lamb of God, it has to do more or less with law and justice, but Aries is sort of more ecclesiastical. This is why when you go to churches, there's always um, pictures of, you know, scales of justice of God and, and lambs. You know, Jesus is the, the, the shepherd, there's, and we're the little sheep, and, and um, you know, sheeple under the steeple, etc. Um, and so... This is the ecclesiastical sign. When you go to court, the black sheep there, the bar, bar, black sheep of the bar, um, they are wearing a white um, sheep um, wig, you know, the wool, beautiful, nice locks of the lamb wool. And so, and then above the courtroom is Venus in Libra holding her scales, you see, and she's blindfolded. So these symbols have to do with Aries and Libra. All symbols, all symbols go back to the 12 signs, the 12 titans, and the seven planets that are visible, um, who are the Olympians, okay? And these two are warring against each other. 12 is mind, 7 is body. And so the spirit and the body are always warring together. 12 is the archetype of mind. There are 12 cranial nerves. 7 is the archetype of physical body. The heart has seven chambers the Septicana Pana, um, cave of uh, Brahma. And so, and so um, our body is, this is the cross, the cardinal cross, the Celtic cross is, is um, simple. It's Aries at the left, um, Cancer at the top, at the Tropic of Cancer. That's why the top bar of the uh, Celtic cross is short because in summer the, the, um, at the, um, in June, or at the 21st of um, June, the solstice, when summer comes along, the um, sun's shadow is very short, you see? Mm -hmm. And then the right branch of the Celtic cross is Libra, balance again, you see? This, these two, this horizontal um, axis is always equal, equal, balance. Here... The days are equal and the nights are equal, 12 hours each. Everything is balanced. It's beautiful balance. Nature is seeking balance. But see, the bottom staff of the Celtic cross is long because on the 21st of December, St. Thomas's Day, the tomb of winter down in hell and Tommy. You see, you get sent down to Tommy, to hell and Tommy because 21st of December, St. Thomas Day, the tomb of winter, is um, that's when the 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 shadow of the sun is long in winter. The sun is low, and you walk, and your shadows, your soul's shadow is cast long in winter. Mm -hmm. A reminder that, a reminder that our soul, the sun is penetrating our soul in in summer, whereas the 
in, in, sorry, in winter because it is low and the nights are long, so we have to reflect longer at night when there is less activity to do. But in the summer, you see this, the shadow is short of the sun, so the sun is piercing, the spirit is piercing the body and growing the body and growing the vegetation. And it is, it's, the angle of light is more direct and more purposeful, you see. And so this Celtic cross is the symbol of fire, the symbol of the ecliptic. Atom, the supreme being, Atma in the West, is the Celtic cross, the Tom. That's Tom. Tom and Adam is the ecliptic. They are one and the same. And all sciences are there. And so when, when you consider the time we are living in, in right now, um, we're in Cancer on the ecliptic. And it is the month of Tammuz, again, Tammuz begins on the 21st of uh, June, the, the winter solstice, opposite St. Thomas Day. So you've got Cancer is all about Tammuz, and the Jews are mourning because lots of bad things happen in this sign, according to the Jews. Moses broke the two tablets of the law in this sign. Yeah, of course, because one tablet is the sun waxing from Capricorn to Cancer, and the other tablet of Moses is the sun waning from Cancer, backwards sliding animal, all the way down to Capricorn. And Ramadan is happening here. Ram, the ram of Adam, Ram Adan. Mm. Yeah. And so what are the Muslims doing? They're fasting. Oh, my God. So in astrology, we've got Cancer, negative sign of backwards sliding. In uh, Islam, we have Ramadan, you shall mourn and fast. And in the Jewish system, we have um, Tammuz, Tammuz being this, this Eastern god, the sun, Atma, Atom, Tammuz, and he, he is now declining, you see. So the Jews, why did they say, why did they say um, all of this uh, negative stuff was, um, was happening this month? Well, waning. Waning is, is, is sad. It, it carries with it the, um, the, um, the prospect of sadness, you see. From this point on, the sun is falling. It has to pass it on, through judgment date, September 23rd, which is the autumnal tom, nor equinox, and it is judged, and that is called Judgment Day at one Day, 23rd of September, by the Jews. Again, sadness. It's the setting of the sun daily. Every day, um, Libra is at the setting of the sun, and its brown and red rays bring sadness to mankind. The animals pause in, in sobriety at that moment of the sunset. And then, of course, at midnight, which is Capricorn, and, and winter, um, that, of course, is further sadness and contemplation for mankind. More people die in winter than they do in any other season. And so, and so you see, this waning period is, is celebrated in Ramadan and Tammuz and Cancer. It is celebrated because, you know, it's, it's, it's a month of lamentation. It's a month of sadness because now... Um, things are going to uh, pretty much decline. You see, and this is why the Jews said that um, in the Gemara, they discuss five tragedies that happened uh, on the 17th of Tammuz. Well, that would be basically um, the solstice, you know, the 21st through the 25th of um, June, which is basically... Um, you know, the four day, three days that the sun stands still on the horizon and remains in the month of Tammuz, the tomb. See, Jesus is three days entombed. Then, of course, on the 25th of June, he starts wandering off again. And that date happens to be the birthday of St. John, which is opposite the 25th of December, which is the birthday of his Lord Jesus Christ. I shall go on decreasing, yes, waning, and he shall go on increasing, yes, waxing, the sun, the Capricorn sun, Jesus born in Capricorn, 25th of December, the goat that climbs and waxes 
along the circuit of Galilee and then turns up in Jerusalem, which is the sign of cancer. Because Jerusalem is in the high heaven. When that sun reaches cancer way up there in June the 21st, it is enthroned in Jerusalem. It is received as, you know, the sun in all of its glory. Ra, the Christ. Right? And so summer is the great sign of of all goodness and then on the 6th of August is the transfiguration of the sun he gets transfigured on the 6th of August Jesus takes four disciples with him and um, they see him transfigured and white yes of course because the 6th of August is the middle day of summer it's the mid mid summer point Mm -hmm. and so the sun again receives more glory but still it is sadness so what we can expect is um, Sorry, let me just um, reiterate the other five um, sadnesses, tragedies, according to the Jews, Mm -hmm. and then um, what we can expect. The other one is the daily offering of the the korban, the tamid, was discontinued in the temple. So, you know, Solomon's temple, the daily offering was discontinued. This this happened in in Tammuz, in Cancer. Yes, because you don't offer to the sun when it's declining. You wait till it starts and then you put your little Christmas lights on and then you light them up on Christmas Eve and you put gifts there and you, you know, and you, um, little Christmas branch, which is the branch of Jesse, David, the son of Jesse, the son of, you know, Jesus, the, the lamb of the lion of the tribe of Judah, son of David. Why? Because that branch of Christmas, that's the shoot of Jesse. That's, it shoots off in, 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 in winter and then gets exalted in, in um, Aries, the Lamb of God, in Easter, and then, of course, bears fruits in Cancer. Cancer is where she's the goddess, the moon. She's going to start bearing fruit, and then Virgo comes along after Leo, and she's the harvester. She's got her harvest um, emblems, you know, the sheath of grain in her hand, and she extends her hand out, outstretched with speaker in there. And so she's the handmaiden of the Lord. See, and so um, these um, the daily offering is discontinued in the temple. The temple is the ecliptic. Everything is the ecliptic. Number three, the breaching of the walls of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, culminating in the destruction of the first temple in 586 BCE. The Jehovah's Witnesses say that that it was 607 BCE, 20 years earlier, and. Um, You know, I used to teach that for 30 years. But this destruction probably occurred in 586 BCE in Cancer. And also, when the Romans destroyed it in 70 CE, they destroyed it in Cancer again. The fourth one, the Greek Apostomus, uh, sorry, Apostomus, yeah, uh, burned a copy of the Torah um, in Cancer. And um, this was associated with the beginning of the Bar Kokhba revolt. Bar Kokhba revolt. Number five, an an adulterous image was placed in the temple. Well, that was the Greeks, they did that. And so these tragedies, they all occurred in cancer. And so whether they occurred historically matters not. I believe they did. Um, But... Significance should never be placed on the lowest common denominator, which is the literal historical rendition of Scripture. There are 72 um, interpretations of Scripture according to the uh, Kabbalistic Jews. And so um, more priority should be given to the other um, um, interpretations, which are the higher ones. The spirit of the word vivifies and the letter of the word destroys. So... Mm -hmm. um, Historically, we need, you know, these five incidences um, have so much little significance as compared to how cancer affects our daily and yearly lives. It is a point of reflection, hence we fast. And rather than feasting, we are fasting because Mm -hmm. the the spirit now is activated through the fast. The body is activated through the feast. Hence, you have a um, festival, a feast to Baal, 
carnival, a carn, you know, um, um, carnality, basically eating of flesh and and um, and lust in the carnival, which is, you know, um, basically the priest of Baal, the Khan, the Khan, the Cohen of Baal, carnival. So we're not having a festival. We're having a festival. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay? So <laughs> that's why Ramadan, the ram of Adam, occurs in this month. So it's a month of reflection, you see? Um, apart from the crab or the, uh, um, the crab, the Egyptians placed the scarab in Cancer, you see, because the sun from Capricorn has to climb and wax and climb all those signs, you know, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, bang, finally it reaches Cancer and there it is conjunct Sirius, the, 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 the brightest star in the sky, hence the, the, sun, the, summer, is, um, the summer comes because of the conjunction of uh, the sun with Sirius in Cancer, you see, and July the 4th is a, is a great festivity um, uh, of the, um, it's actually July 4th is Apohelion Day. Perihelion is January 4th when the Earth is closest to the Sun. Um, in Cancer, on uh, 4th of July, it's Apohelion Day and the Sun is furthest away from the, um, from the Earth and yet it projects a, he- a, a more heat through, the Egyptians used to say, the conjunction of the sun with Sirius. Hence, the dog star brings the dog days on the ecliptic. So, what all this signifies is that we, we, we begin our yearly reflection in cancer. Spirituality occurs feasting, uh, sorry, fasting, Ramadan, morning, reflection begins here. Okay? So, what this new moon is bringing us is is the spirit of reflection now she has opened a portal through which we will um, activate our reflective nature in order to release the intelligence from matter and so the focal point of our intelligence and spirit is in the heavens you know treasure not uh, do not store your treasures here on earth where um, moth and rust consume Store your treasures in heaven where uh, they are protected eternally. And so if our focal point, uh, the focal point of our spirit and soul is the intelligence is focused in matter, we will reincarnate many, many, many times to taste blood, you know, uh, in terms of living blood and walking and and, um, passing through the Red Sea, Mm. which is the blood, the, the bodies of blood, red blood. So, if we want to get onto the shores and and um, and put our feet firmly on the shores across the Red Sea, uh, outside of incarnation and beyond transcendently, um, and go and return to the the Sabbath of the Lord and the rest, the holy rest of uh, the Lord, uh, outside of incarnation and conditioned existence, to a state of being, we must. Um, you know, shed this um, material fixation. And so, um, Tamil's Cancer Ramadan is all about um, focusing now internally. Everything now is waning. The sun is waning. And then, of course, um, two uh, deacons of Cancer are Ursa Major and Ursa Menor. And the other one is Argos. Argos is the boat of Noah, you know, the, the bark of Ra. It's the, um, basically, it's the wheel on the ecliptic. You know, we're now in the, um, we are now in the ship and Ursa Major, which is basically the bark of Ra, also, you know, the big dipper in the sky. You see her going around every year, you know. Every year she's uh, upright or um, pointing downwards, the dipper, you know, depending on whether it's at the Tropic of Cancer or at the Tropic of um, Capricorn. At midnight, you will see her either upside down, pouring down, or scooping. And so, this bark is the eternal bark of the circumpolar northern region where the sun never goes. You know, this is the origin and the place where we all descend from, the Milky Way. And so, these bears, you see, the bear market is the waning market 
of the stock market. But you see, the bull, Taurus, is on the waxing side. So the bull market is always climbing up. Whereas the, um, the bear market, this is always going downward, downward, downward. So cancer and the tropic of cancer is pointing to this uh, fact that um, now we are in the sign of the bears. And the Big, dip, the big Dipper is uh, pointing us uh, downwards toward um, Tishri, Libra, Sukkoth, the month of judgment and um, the um, scales. You see, now Saturn exalts there. Saturn is Satan. Darkness occurs in Libra. It's the um, beginning of all the winter, the autumn and winter. It's cold. Um, the sun is passing through the Red Sea. The leaves are red. Um, it's Egypt, it's down in Egypt. The children of Israel now go down to Egypt. So you see this position of um, the ecliptic is so perfect. When you visualize the Tropic of Cancer at the top and the Tropic of Capricorn at the bottom and the um, equinox, the equator in between, so 23 and a half degrees north, 23 and a half degrees south, you've got this and then you, you draw the sine wave of the ecliptic and you draw it in a circular, in a circle. Um, now you can see how the Egyptians made Libra. What they did was they changed the position of Libra. They put Libra down where Capricorn is at the bottom, right? They did this as, as, a, as a spiritual um, exercise um, for the mind to see that souls incarnate in cancer and and then um, Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn, is where, at the Tropic of Cancer, that's what's called the portal of the gods, hmm. where souls um, leave incarnation. But they enter in, in the Tropic of Cancer because, you see, the sun is closer to the moon, the moon is closer to the, uh, um, um, well, it's, it's the ruler of that sign. I think the moon is actually closer to the earth. The sun is further away, but the moon is, is closer to the earth. So this, it's a portal. These cardinal, cardinal means portal. Cardo in Latin means porta or hinge, which is a door hinge. So it's a door. So cardinal, these are portals. This is why the, the solstices are so important in theology and, and sacred days that are celebrated here. So souls enter there through the moon, you see? And see, and then all the rest of the planets now um, are all seven planets that must be um, passed through. Um, all the signs, the rulers are all different planets. So you've got Cancer is the moon, then Leo is the sun, the ruler, then Mercury is the ruler of Virgo, then Venus is the ruler of Libra, Mars the ruler of Scorpio, Jupiter, Sagittarius, Saturn, of Capricorn. And so this is absolutely the natural progression of the soul um, going through um, the portals, entering at Cancer and leaving at Capricorn. Hence, the Egyptians cleverly put Libra at the bottom there because, because there are two systems, you know, and that would put um, Aries at the top where Aries is truly the mid-heaven. So, um, what you get now is you get um, Anubis and, um, and Horus in the Hall of Judgment at the bottom where we must pass through and pay the ferryman and we must bring the correct currency for the next realm. You see, when you go through customs, right, um, you've got to change your currency because that realm there is different, you know. You, you know, in China it's the yen, in Australia it's the dollar. So... When we're transmigrating through these realms, when we go from Cancer the Moon and we actually become solar heroes in Leo and we acquire the true solar consciousness for the rest of our journey through Virgo, Mercury, Libra, Venus, Scorpio, Mars, become heroes at Mars, and Jupiter, we become enlightened in Sagittarius, the one-eyed you know, man coming from the animal nature, then Capricorn, we're out of here. That's the death. It's the grave. It's um, uh, Golgotha. It's Calvary. It's the tombstone. It's the stable that Hercules must cleanse with the goats and the sheep in there. 
and you know, and um, in Cancer is where the donkeys are and the stable of Jesus born in the manger. And so what you get here now is the cardinal signs are showing the posts in which we must, uh, where we must go through to, um, we've got 12 labors. We, once we fulfill the 12 labors of the soul, we're, we're gone. And we enter um, basically in Capricorn and depart from Capricorn um, if we're going to take the whole ecliptic um, as a journey of 12 um, paths, or if you want to do the seven uh, paths, you go from Cancer through to Capricorn. And so you've got um, that particular journey that must be, um, must be taken. But nonetheless, this is why pilgrimages uh, are undertaken by devotees, because in the process of walking the path of your pilgrimage, um, certain intuitional... Um, inspirations are released from the soul because you see this is what happens the the journey the pilgrimage the fast reactivates some um, past life experiences of of the true pilgrimage which is the soul going through its transmigration as it sublimates it's led into gold you see and so um what we're here to do is to um activate these portals. Cancer is all about activating reflection now. Now we are reflective. The moon is the reflector of the light of the sun. So hence we, we should be fasting, really we should. And and I would recommend um, one day a fast every week, you know, uh, as the um, the Bragg's people um, of, Bra um, of Bragg's vinegar, apple cider vinegar, have taught to um, you know, to Americans for a hundred years. And many people have done this fast and prospered, you see, because when you fast properly, pro properly and you deprive the body for one day of any nourishment at all, just water fast, water and rest, um, you give the body a rest, you give it a Sabbath, you give it a cleanse. It now, um, it, it can now uh, reset and you see, and during the fast, the body actually attacks, the immune system actually attacks, has a chance to rest, uh, um, to be activated to attack anything that is harming it, i.e. cancer, acidic mold, and all sorts of um, parasitic infestations. And so fasting was a requirement, you see. That's why the Islamists have their five main pillars of Islam, and one of them is you must fast every year. If you do not, you will have an unholy, impure, parasitic, infested, parasite-infested um, temple. Mm. And so this is what cancer teaches us, people, to clean the temple. When the Lord comes along the ecliptic, he will first clean the temple before he ministers to his, um, to his uh, devotees, you see, and that is cancer, you see. He also gives it a spring clean in, in spring, in Aries. That's the spring cleaning. This is why we celebrate Easter and the resurrection of the Lord and the resurrection of the sun on the ecliptic and the blossom and spring and flowers and sakura and cerealia and all of these. Same word, by the way. Japan has sakura in, um, in um, Shibu no Hinde, which is the equinox of Easter, <laughs> uh, and um, the Romans on the 15th of April had cerealia, sacuraria, cerealia. Just remember that the L and the R are interchangeable. So if you've got sacura, well, just change that to uh, sacula or uh, cerealia, you see, and... Um, and this is what's going on. This is a, a spring clean. The blossom is evidence of that. And then, of course, the summer, the heat of summer is also the evidence of the spring clean in, uh, in cancer, the fasting and the devotion to the Lord and, and the cleansing of the temple, you see. So, and this is why the Jews say it's also sad because the breaching of the walls of the temple happened by Nebuchadnezzar in cancer. It happened by the Romans, Moses broke the two tablets. No, well, these are figurative. It's not literal. It's figurative because this is where the Lord comes on in the ecliptic to cleanse the temple, and the temple is the body. And if we do not present 
cleansed temples on that day, we shall not have the required currency of that realm. We must pay the ferryman. And the ferryman is going through Libra, through the river Styx. You see, that river is, is, is there, going from uh, Cancer through the Hydra of Cancer, through uh, Lupus of Libra, the Wolf of Darkness, and then Draco is the serpent, you see, from Libra to Capricorn that brings us to Sagittarius through, through to Capricorn. And then Ara is the altar where we sacrifice in one of the deacons of Sagittarius. And um, we make our sacrifice there and we bring all the, um, um, the sacrifices of summer because we've uh, collected the harvest in Virgo. Um, then we um, bring it to be weighed in the scales of Libra and we bring it down um, and bring it and sacrifice it in Ara Sagittarius on the altar there to, you know, to heaven. And so Capricorn is the symbol of um, the king, the 10th house in astrology is the house, the 10th sign, corresponds to the 10th sign, which is Capricorn. The sign and the house are two different things. But um, they have the same um, parallels and the, and and sympathies, and though those would be Capricorn is ten completion, ten fingers, political stability, infrastructure. Um, in the house system, it is fame, glory, distinction, distinctions, honor, and what what is to be found in the natives' um, treasures in terms of his external, most external, external parts of his life. You see, the four, the four um, angles of the zodiac, the four main crucial um, houses would be the first, the fourth, um, the seventh, and the tenth. Well, the first one is, is about you, your personality, and the tenth, uh, the MC, is... Um, you know, the, the end of days, the end of your path. It's, it's the number 10. It's one becomes 10 now, but they are both one. 10 is just um, a, a higher octave of one, and, it's, and it's, it's reaching upwards. And so Aries is one, and it's the fir- it relates to the first house. And so these angles, that, um, which astrologers say are the most important, most astrologers only look at the first and the tenth house, the ascendant and the MC. And so, but if you go around anti-clockwise through the, the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth house, you will see how they relate to you and your um, and your uh, path and your transmigration through the Red Sea. The first house is your personality, your character, where you start off, your body, your 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 natural nature. Then the fourth house is your home. So it's base two. It's how you operate in base two. Base two would be, you know, base one is how you operate just you as a unit. But base two now is the home, your family, your brothers and sisters, your mother, your father, your kin. More, more now it's more the, it's the tribe sort of thing, right? So you, it's a different phase of you. Um, seven is where you are with your partners and relationships, business relationships and and how you relate now to to your opposite or your your bonding the one that you your other half your better half your um, uh, I'm looking for the right words here but you know what I'm saying you, you go is you you have to meet people that will now begin to um, sharpen your skills and you sharpen theirs and as a team you work so here now you're working. As a team, so you've got in the first house, you, just you. The second house is a family. The uh, third one, as I'm mean, sorry, the seventh house is as a team. And then the tenth house is universal, how you operate in the universe, in the world, the big bad world out there on the ecliptic. It's the number ten, completion of man. You see, number one is unity. Number four is foundation and firmness. Number seven is perfection. The perfect number, and number ten is completion, and this is what the ecliptic teaches. The ecliptic, the ecliptic um, truly teaches this science of performing twelve labors, and um, 
and how we do that. Jason did that. Jesus did that. Hercules, Ulysses, Odysseus, all the solar heroes. And a solar hero is one that leaves the um, earthly consciousness or planetary consciousness, which is reflective, and um, embraces um, solar consciousness, which is heroic and direct energy, and it is um, spiritual. And uh, this is the transition that, you know, you and I and the listeners are in now to different levels because, you know, um, truly humanity has had the, uh, the, fifth, uh, the, um, the heart chakra activated, which is the um, level of wisdom. You see, um, but um, we on this, on this call here, we are... Um, definitely um, in the fifth chakra, the throat chakra now. See, this is where we use and apply the wisdom that we have from our hearts where we should be centered. We should be centered in the heart, but we should reach the crown chakra, the high ram, heaven. The heart is paradise, earth. It's paradise, it's unity, it's... Um, um, it's the, it's the focal point. We should be centered there in the heart. But if we don't, if the lion of, of the heart, Leo, it does not lie down with the lamb of Aries, the crown chakra, the cerebrum, uh, the lamb of God, the lion and lamb, see, the motif of the lion and the lamb is just that the mind and the heart must be one. So, sure, we shouldn't be centered in the mind, as the great sages say, but we must reach the mind. And if we do not reach the high heaven, high ram, hearted armor, um, that's where Christ is, Krishna. And so, and that's Saturn, the crown chakra, Satya Loka. It's, and what we do is we go from the, the lower chakra opinion to the navel chakra not, um, sense. And this is where you get all those words sensible, Sensei in Japanese, senator, um, senior. You can also get senile, you know. <laughs> but um, sen, sen, sense. Okay, common sense. Mm. Then we are sensible and we become a senator, a senior member of society. And so, but we don't want to stay there. That's the water baptism. We need to go through the knowledge phase now. And knowledge is what? Well, it's tradition. Um, ex um, observation and experimentation. So once we become more more scientific and we um, you know apply our, our observation of sense to um, penetration of knowledge, then we get we go through that and the glimmer of the higher chakra, which is wisdom, is activated, and then we go into the heart chakra and we and we become wise and he hence you see many people regardless of the walk of life or the caste or the um, um, you know where they are economically or how much they've evolved they all show this chakra in one way or another they do show um, this wisdom and love they show human love you see you, there, there are good people in church there are good people outside of church Goodness exists. It comes from the heart. And we are children of goodness. Good, God. In Neoplatonism, good is God. These terms are interchangeable, always have been. And so this is where it is. It's in the heart. And uh, whereas being is, uh, being is Aries, the Lamb, I am, the one, the oneness. And so when these two are joined... And as we go through the levels, you see the, the throat chakra now is intuition. And so it's, it's and, then, and then the, the pineal gland, that is theurgy. And the Neoplatonists said that this theurgy is, is the, the, the merging of the, all the lower minds into the, the buddhic mind. So the manas climbs from the, the, through the Rupa Manas in the Hindu system into, through the Buddhic 
and then, of course, relinquishes mind and then uh, is absorbed by atma, atum, which is the infinite, everlasting jiva life principle, being of being, which is unconditioned, unqualified, and unlimited existence, and the principle of all principles. And that's where we were, that's where we descend from. <laughs> Even though our souls have an origin um, of, in point of time of creation, but is uh, created immortal and can never die, and this is um, this is being, you know, this is um, beyond all conditions, beyond virtue, which is a condition, beyond thinking, beyond mind, beyond good and beauty, which are basically, which is you know, the one, the good and the beautiful of Plotinus. Um, that that one is transcendent, inconceivably transcendent, unknowable, and um, it is the Ein, it is the Ein Sof, it is the Ein Sof Aur, and so everything is there in suspense. It is um, the eternal uh, time in in presence, in the present moment, always the motion in suspense, the eternal everlasting life principle and um, that is our true substance our true home our true nature if you could call it that it's not any of those it's 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 a state of being it's transcendence and all of the rest are just um, you know uh, prototypes or archetypes uh, or principles which descend from transcendent inconceivably transcendent and infinite being which is our true nature a true cause. Yeah, these are exactly the, the the topics we wanted to discuss today. So, we also with Stefan did some investigation about the astrological signs and how they look, and we just stumbled upon the things like you know, all the zodiacal wheel can be sliced into pieces. Like um, the uppercase of the zodiacal wheel is is more in round shapes, like and the upper lower case is more squarey shape science like for example we just sent you some pictures and and if you if you will open them you just will see like um, like we will if we will travel from Aries to Taurus to to uh, Gemini and Cancer and so on till till Virgo we will see that all those sciences they are very very round shapes and they are all correlating to the flower of life you know the um, can you open that picture with, with Aries and Vesica Pisces which um, was dropped you? There's no file in the chat here. I don't have any files. Okay, I just will drop you just a second. That's yeah, very yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it in yours? Wait a minute. No, no, that's just In that the... plot with which, which I sent you. Oh, in the plot. Okay, uh -huh. I, didn't, yeah, yeah. I didn't scroll down enough. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, just go on now. Let's have a look. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So Lovely. that's very interesting how you know that all the zodiacal wheel is you know sliced into pieces. One is round shapes and the other is in squarey shapes, like you know. And in in the upper case we have day, which produces fertility, life, blossom. It's also related to woman, to round female shapes, and those night signs uh, produces the death, masculinity, square forms. And if we will look like to every single, you know, sign from Aries to, to the Pisces, we will see how the flower of life is correlating into them. For example, Aries, we see we see two, two uh, circles or two suns interacting together, creating that Vesica Pisces in Aries. And uh, that's very interesting because if we will look at the Pisces, uh, when the year ended, astrological year, uh, we will see that the uh, Osiris was cut into many pieces and we also see how the Pisces sign looks like you know two circles sliced into pieces so and after that when year starts again we see how Aries again unites those two two circles into one starting this new year so that's very interesting and then we are traveling to the Taurus as you see in this picture we have already three circles here you know again the flower of light just again goes and starts all this life and all this story again then we go to to the to the twins again. We we see here four si uh, circles, and so the story goes here. That's very interesting. Yep. Yep. Beautiful. Very nice. 
Yeah, and also we just started to investigate a little bit the runes of, of Scandinavians or just some people call them hermetic runes. Uh, so also those signs still till Virgo, they go in round shapes and then they start to change their energies and from, for example, Scorpio, Libra, Sagittarius and then Aquarius and Pisces, they go to squarey shapes, those night, 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 night shapes. And, you know, here again, we can correlate with the runes of, of those hermetics. And that's very interesting how, for example, if we will look at the Aquarius sign, it really correlates with rune of movement, breakthrough, opening, and the self, you know, all those aspects of Aquarius we are living now in, in this era. So, so synchronistic. Beautiful. Wonderful. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This is true. Um, when when you truly when you truly open your eyes to the ecliptic, which is one one and the same as Atom, Adam, Adam Kadmon, then then you understand all things. There's only there's only one teacher of all things. That's the ecliptic. Atum, syncretism. That's it. There's there's no other way. <laughs> it's inconceivable because the ecliptic is the sine wave, and as Walter Russell said, the secret of creation, which is everything, lies in the wave. It's the wave, and you, you, we must think of waves. We must see the wave, hmm. and 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 live the wave. And see everything that is on the wave. The wave starts always at zero point at the equinox, at the equator of its of its vibration, and its vibration will go all that way to the left, and then all the way opposite, all the other way to the right, and it will meet in the middle and always balance, and it'll just vibrate. and And so you've got wave amplitude, you've got sine and cosine. You see, Adam and Eve, sinner and cosinner. She couldn't, you know, she couldn't do it on her own. She needed a Cosigner. So that's what, how the wave goes. Adam and Eve. Adam is the ecliptic. It's the wave. It's sine and cosine. And so um, these, as you notice that certain glyphs have more curvature in them, hence, you know, the flower of life, well, that's true, you know. Uh, but even Pisces, you can see, has got beautiful curves because. Um, basically, um, when, when you consider Cancer in the seven system, in the seven transmigration system from Cancer to Capricorn, which I just explained, um, Aquarius through um, Gemini, um, this area here is has nothing to do with incarnation. You see, so you see, you see that this is um, dealing with uh, the preconditioned life, and it shows. It also tells a story, you see. So conditioned life begins at Cancer and ends at Capricorn, and and this is the wheel that depicts this this cycle, this wave. And our life is a wave. If you could see the moment you were born to the moment you died in wave form, you would see this breathing toroidal energy, you know, growing and changing color through all the days of your life, you will see the breaths, the many breaths, and you will see, basically, you will just see a wave, you see. So as now, as we begin to receive our insights and intuitions along the ecliptic, where they all are, all thinking is ecliptical, all objects are ecliptical, everything is Atom, okay. That's how you. That's how come you get to get, get to have an anatomy, and that's how come when we study all words in all languages, we study atomology, otherwise known as etymology, because everything is about atoms. All words, all thoughts, all things come from atom, the ecliptic, and so there is only one teacher. There is only one syncretism, and the sooner we acknowledge it. Oh, the way better we will feel um, in in our um, 
you know, in our souls, in our lives. Hey, guys, just give me a, a pause for one minute because I'm going to go and grab some matches and uh, light the fire down here. I'm freezing. It's so cold. Yeah, sure. All right. Just one minute. Uh -huh. Hey, I'm within earshot, so you can just keep talking anyway if you want to, and so we don't waste any time. I'll just get this fire going. You do the talk, guys. Mute, mute me. I'll mute, I'll mute myself out. You go, keep going, all right? Okay, dope. Just, just for a minute. Okay. Fire away. Yeah, well, another thing we looked at, um, took that a little bit apart, uh, looked at the letters a little bit like, um, you know, uh, Boyd Kuhn would, would look at them, um, in a more sign language, um, and if you look at, at Jesus, you know, J, uh, the Joker, the catch, the hook, you know, um, then E, energy, or electricity, godly energy, and then the S, the double S, uh, would be, you know, the double spirit, the sine and cosine that you were just talking about, and in the middle is the U, which is, which is U, to be filled up, uh, which is the holy grail, um, so, Jesus, in this word, you could see, you know, to hook the energy of the sine waves, and the great hooking of the energy and the, and the potential grail, holy grail of you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also the, not only Jesus, but also the Christ, you know, if you will look at the letters, at the single letters of the Christ, and Q, R, S, T, U, if we will look from the zodiacal wheel, again, we see that Q is like sun symbol again with sine wave, which going from the from the center of that Q letter. Then we see that R is like if we will just reverse that R, we will see that we have male and female energies like line and sine wave again. Then S, and then again T, which Jesus was crucified on the cross, and again the U, which is again the Grail, you know, so that you have to connect all those experiences of life you know all that duality in your life and, and be and be crucified so so called allegorically and just in order to again again to see your grail you are carrying inside of yourself so that's written in the jesus and, and the christ the the words itself very interesting yeah and there we see uh in q like you said um the sun sign in R, as we said, the rune that Rido, the path uh, to the, to the Christ spirit consciousness in you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Oh, and uh, Santos was talking before about Jera, right? Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. He talked about the Jehovah and. I just thought that it can also be correlated to Jera, the rune of the Hermetics again. So Jera like G, like Jesus, and Ra like Sun. So Jesus, Jesus, Ra, and Sun. And also Jera is like year a like the, the, the rune literally talking about the year and the harvest of that year. And also the, the that rune looks like the same as the Cancer, so sign. So again, Cancer, and in Cancer we have letter G, which is G, Ra, and again Jesus. Jira, so sun being in its material peak and peak of the year and peak of the Jera, Jehovah and and all the rest of those things. So again, correlates everywhere. Right on, and then there yeah, was look, one, yep. Just let, let me add while I can. Um, I'm still working on this fire, but. Um, Jera, um, Hera, Hiram, Hira, uh, Hare, Rama, all of these are exactly the same word. And that's why our word for year is basically a corruption of Jera or Jaran. It comes from the Proto Germanic word Jaram, spelled J A R A M, you know, Jera, Yera, Year. And so Jar the Ram is the sun from Aries. It, the sun is always symbolized by its first sign on the ecliptic, the lamb, the ram, jar ram. Hence, the year is the jar ram. It's the ecliptic.
Yeah, it's also very interesting that we have the uh, Jesus, like again, Jesus, like G, and we have uh, we have cancer. the The name of the Jesus begins in cancer, on the solstice, and then again the Christ and T letter again ends on the on the again the solstice, but on the Capricorn. So again, we have the Jesus Christ uh, that as that spine of the old zodiacal wheel. Again, very interesting. Right on. It is one more thing uh, that we wanted to share with you. Um, a word that we looked at a little bit. Uh, the word of master. Um, since we're talking about stars, you know, master, dictionary, uh, noun, late old English, magister, one having control or authority from Latin magister, chief, head, director, teacher, and so on, you know, is the M master. It's a star for the masses, a star for the material, the materialized star for the masses and lots of people who follow you know their masters and believe instead of knowing the information given by authority are just blinded by the light of the star of matter you know by doing so they're giving up their creative energy they're giving it away and they're not being original but sheep you know slave servant type people easy to control so that word, master, a star for the masses, you know, uh, can teach us, you know, shine your own light and uh, be the eternal star of your own creations. And that is the um, inner alchemy we were talking about, you know, led into gold, um, that shining from the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good one. Wonderful. Um, I just want to make mention to a point that you touched on just before, if if that's okay, um, because you see, in Neoplatonism, and in particular Proclus, um, in his theology, described what you know. Basically, he he, he did what we're doing here, syncretism, you know, he, he basically summed, summed up Plato and all the other Neoplatonists, Plotinus, uh, Iamblichus, Ammonius Saccus, um, and all these guys by simply reducing everything to, you know, numerical um, sacred geometry, really. Uh, numbers, the power of number, as Pythagoras put it, um, the gods, the archetypes are, are number archetypes, you see. And so this is why Jesus in Greek, the, the, uh, in Gematria, it's um, 888, you see. And the, the mark of the beast, man in Greek, comes to 666. Uh, so, you know, 6 is, is a good number. It's the number that creation says it takes to make a man. Um, but seven is, is the rest, you see. And so, and that would be 777. Seven, seven. That, that would be the number of, of the hero. So you would find that in Greek the word hero would be 777. Seven, seven. And then your Jesus, which is the soul of the universe, would be 888. Eight, eight. Um, and Christ would have to be. Uh, 999, it would have to be, because Christ precedes Jesus. Christ is the spirit of the universe. Jesus is the soul. It's the sun. So really, Christ, Krishna, um, all of this atom, it's, it's one and the same. It's the universal Christ consciousness, you know, uh, or um, the Christ, the, you know, the being. And this is the only name that is being allowed for this this one. You know, you, you've got your Atma or, or Krishna, um, and um, and this is nine. Is you know, there's there's nine only nine numbers in existence, really, uh, and so or or glyphs or patterns for numbers. All the rest, it's always <clears throat> they're repeated. So these are the nine levels and this is why um, 
Tesla said, if only we knew the secret of three, six, and nine, we would know the secret of the universe. Well, it's the secret of the ecliptic because um, if you know your numbers and your gods, your archetypes, then you know what Tesla was talking about. He could only be talking about one thing. It's always the ecliptic. Um, if he had have continued his little cipher there and added another number, the number 12, uh, he would have revealed instantly 90% of humanity would have had the clue to what he was talking about. But he left yeah. it secret and he, um, he, said, he just said 3, 9 and 6. It's really 3, 9, 6 and 12 because the whole universe is based on the root 12 um, number. It's, it's all root 12. It's 12 everywhere. The mind of universe is in 12 conditions. Right, and, and one and so, two, one plus two is three. So uh, he, that's he it. Was giving it away. <laughs> that's right. That's right. He would have given it away because, see, what happens is when you um, multiply by twelve, um, the numbers that um, amount that uh, it amounts to every time is three, six, twelve, three, six, twelve, repeatedly forever. So in other words, 12, 24, 36. So 12 is 3, 1 plus 2. 24 is 6. And 36, the next number in sequence, 3 and 6 is 9. And then you go to uh, 48, well, that's 12. So you go back to 3. So you see, see how 3 and 12 are forever interchangeable. So he was clever. He could have said 6, 9 and 12 if you only knew the, the secrets of 6, 9 and 12. But he made it so elegant. And this is why um, teachers and, and philosophies that only teach half of the riddle, they're not teaching half truths, they're just teaching half of the riddle in, in order to activate the other half through the novice and through the initiate, um, what they do is they give you just half of the riddle. And so it's like in India they say all is om, but in in Egypt they were more honest and they said all is atom, you know. So, but is it less truthful? No, it's not less truthful. It's equally truthful. All is om, but om is only half of electrical energy. The other half is sound, the percussive sound, um, which initiates electrical force. And so, and so um, this is uh, the secret of uh, 3, 6 and 12. And so it's, it's, root, it's root 12. And so the other thing with um, the, the 12 numbers it's, is, is it's also decimal. No one, the, the decimal system is perfected through 12 and only through 12. And this is how. Uh, when you line up again all your numbers of 12, 12, 24, 36, what you can see there is the last number is always 24602460, That's 24610, two, four, uh, sorry, 24680. Zero two four six eight zero. I, I omitted the eight. Uh, excuse me. And so, and that's what you see. So twelve. There's the two. Twenty four. Thirty six. Forty eight. Sixty. Seventy two. Eighty four. Ninety six. One hundred and eight. One hundred and twenty. So you can see how it always rounds out to that decimal. Two four six eight ten two four six eight ten, and it's always doing three six nine twelve. Oh, sorry, sorry, three six nine three six nine three six nine. That's the secret of three six nine. It's in the root twelve system, and the root twelve system is the ecliptic. It has to be. All ecliptics must be in twelve thirty degree segments along the thirty three hundred and sixty degrees of arc, and so. And so even when you look at the alphabet, you'll notice that all the vowels, which are the planets, are all in the correct place. A, the moon, the alpha, is at number one. Uh, e, Mercury and Venus, is number five. They are pent pentagonal planets in their, in their spiritual configuration. Pentagram is what defines them. Um, I, the sun, 
the ninth letter. Uh, I is nine is half of eighteen, which is half of thirty six. You see, so that's why six is always um, sorry. Um, nine has always been uh, the number of the sun because of the letter I. Jesus, I, I, the I, mm. um, and and then um, the O is uh, sixteen, the sixteenth letter. Uh, no, sorry, it's the uh, the fifteenth. I'm counting in my head because that yeah has to come to six. So again, six, six is the number of the moon. How so? Well, she spends sixty hours in every sign, every two and a half days, as she progresses thirty degrees along the ecliptic every day. So thirteen plus thirteen is twenty six. And then four more degrees make 30. That's exactly 60 hours. Mm -hmm. So six is her number. Nine. Six and one are her numbers. And nine and one are the sun's numbers. And so when you look at the alphabet, you will also see that um, it is is, um, basically an emotional number system. It, it, letters are charged with emotion and the, the numbers are mind, uh, masculine and feminine. And so this is why Kabbalah has gematria and, and things like that because A in every language will always be one. You know, it's, it always is one. It can never be two. A, the sound A, that's why we say in English a man because that's just one man. So A points to one. Oneness, it always does, and so a planet, you see, is and and so a that sound will always be how one sounds in all languages, whether they have another sound for it or another two sounds for it. You will find in their language that whenever you see a, that it is pointing to one. B b is always two, both. Beth. You know, bi, binary, um, you know, all of those two words, right? You see? So, and, and as you go along the alphabet and you go from one to nine, from one to nine, <clears throat> because J is not the tenth letter, it goes back to nine, you see? So, I, J. J, the Yod in Hebrew, that's tenth. Well, ten, one plus zero, re- res- you know, resolves reduces back to one. So again, again, everything, even in the letter system, um, everything is this one through nine. That's why Tesla was giving the secret away. I mean, it's so bleeding obvious. It's numbers. It's 12, root 12. Understand the ecliptic. Understand 12. Do it urgently, urgently, urgently. Meditate on this. You know, leave all other things. Nothing else is meaningful at all. This, because through this is the path home. <clears throat> through this you acquire theurgy, which is the next level, and then illumination. <clears throat> so the philosopher, right up to the th- uh, throat chakra, <coughs> where you speak, the fifth chakra, where we are now, well, we're actually um, dealing with mystical themes, so we're clearly in the sixth chakra, but... The experience of it is totally another thing. Um, we do experience it all the time uh, at, in varying degrees. It, this climbing up the, the, the ascending ladder, Jacob's ladder, and, and, and uh, Jack with his beanstalk, and uh, Hickory Dickory Dock, the uh, mouse ran up the clock, all of these allusions to energy going up the spine... And as Jesus said, unless um, the serpent of Moses <coughs> is lifted up, you cannot be born again. Um, these are happening at, in varying degrees. You see, every chakra has is one level of consciousness. And inside each of those levels are seven other levels. And so you've got two chakras to climb, really. The emotional mind, uh, part of the soul and the mental part of the soul. So spiritually and mentally, you may be at the fifth level, but emotionally, you might be way higher, you see. 
And so you might have great emotional intuition and so you'll be an intuitionalist rather than, you know, the academic side or the mental side. And um, But both of those need to climb up the seven levels. So this language, this uh, discourse we're having now is is truly, truly based on the fifth level. In other words, it is, you know, it's philosophy. It's wisdom. We love it. You know, we love wisdom. That's all. We're not, you know, uh, proposing or um, postulating any other basis. We're coming from the grassroots and we're, we're philosophizing, so loving wisdom. But the mystical area really truly is the sixth chakra and, and you know, we, we do enjoy it. We do experience it. It's just that uh, some more than others. And, um, and so it's, it's there. It's always there. It's never, it's like, um, and Manly P. Hall explains that it, it's like the isthmus of an hourglass. Um, you see, as the mind ascends the lower mind and it focuses toward that isthmus um, and it completes one cycle and, and one level, then it squeezes through and then forever branches ever outwardly again, you see. And basically, this hourglass represents our two, our two um, you know, um, our two parts the part of us which is mind projecting downward to body, mat, mind and matter, and the part that is um, outside of mind which is, you know, um, unconditioned. It's a state of unconditionedness, whereas um, here we are in basically a planetary condition, whereas the above state is a solar state. It's a solar state because only the sun is vital. Only the sun is the life giver. The planets are life acceptors. They accept life. They do not give life. They are the soul givers. They um, um, mould the soul, so to speak. But the sun is everything. The sun is spirit, soul, and body. There are three suns, as Proclus and Plotinus, all the Neoplatonists uh, um, taught. You know, there's the physical sun that warms our body. There's the psychic sun that warms our soul. That's mind and emotion. And there's the spiritual sun, which is back of the sun, which is the Christ, the true Christ. The psychic one is, the, is Jesus. The physical one is Emmanuel. You see? That's why the Freemasons do not say Jesus Christ. That's backwards. It's Christ Jesus. Christ is first. Christ is the spirit. It's, it's Krishna. It's the supreme being. Whereas... Um, Jesus is the world soul, it's the world mind, mind thinking, universal mind thinking, conditions. So once we relinquish our selfhood and, and mind, then we are absorbed into infinitesimal, infinite being. And um, never again do we have to suffer conditions unless by choice. Hmm. Beautiful. Well... What a download, Santos. How's your fire going? Yeah, yeah, good. I'm just looking at it now. I'm going to just quickly mute for another... Oh, well, now I can make noise. I'm just going to open the door. Well, now. you know, I, I think we're close to the two-hour mark here. Um, I think this was is quite a little bit to uh, digest. And, um, wow, what a download. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's, that's enough, man. I've got another show to go to, too, anyway. Yeah, so um, let's do this uh, again next week at the same time and um wow i'm gonna have fun cutting this and listen to all this again this was awesome yeah Thank yeah you. yeah for sure all right guys oh in the meantime if you want some real inspiration and for the listeners listen to uh manly p hall's series of the buddhic sheath on youtube please especially part five it's a two and a half hour talk and part five, I posted it on my Facebook. I posted it everywhere and I've um, uh, prefaced it by the words, something to the effect that this is the best of the best of the best. If you want to know how to ascend, if you want to know what you're doing, where you're going, if you want to know what it's all about, at least listen to part five of the Buddhic sheath. Uh, the others do deal with the Arupa Manus and all of this. So a lot of what I... What I um, shared with you today has been inspired by Manly P. Hall, so, okay. Yeah.
Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Alright, see you soon. Bye bye. bye. See you. We all want to see, we all want to be real, and we're searching when we're finding. We all want to feel the taste of belief, and we search for directions where we meet with our fears. We all want to steer, we want to Just take fear and get